Hi, this is Russ Anderson. In this tutorial, I'm going to show how you can combine a regular moving object solve with an overlay of geometric hierarchy tracking. And that's a way to get the advantages of both and be able to add secondary tracking to a regular moving object solve. So we've got our shot here with this little box that opens up. And I've already done a bunch of supervised tracking to it. It's a 4K shot. The trackers are sitting right on the corners, which does take a bunch of supervision to do. So I, I've already done that. And we're ready to start setting up to do the initial moving object solve. So I'm going to add the moving object and since I'd already created the trackers, I'm going to just go and drag them all into that moving object. Now, there's actually something a little funny about these two guys here. They're on the lid of the box, so they can't be used as is to do the moving object solve. Because for a moving object solve, all of the points have to be rigidly connected to one another. And obviously those aren't rigid, they're, they're moving around later in the shot. But they are useful for, for part of it. So what I'm going to do is take those two trackers and I'm going to drag them back to the camera. And not only that, I'm going to hold down control as I do that so that I'm creating an additional copy of them there. So now I've got the ones here as well as the ones up in the camera. So the ones that I've got in the object, I'm going to truncate them. I'm going to unlock them. I'm going to set the enable off so that there's no longer any tracking data back there. Now you'll see that they, if you look at the one up here, you'll see that it's red, it's there, it's there, it's there. Then it turns not red. And that, that teal color there is actually an indication that it's you're looking at a tracker on a different object. In this case, it's the clone of it on camera one. So now I'll do the same thing for the other one. Just going to unlock it, disable it, and lock it back up. So I've got now some shorter versions of those trackers for use in doing the object solve. So next we're going to set up a coordinate system for this. I'm going to use the star 3 button here and these trackers on the top surface of the box. So that was the origin, the on axis, and the on plane trackers. And now just have some coordinate system constraints set up for them. And our next step is to go to the solver panel. We want to have object one get solved, but the camera itself, that we're not solving for, it's not moving. And we have those other couple of trackers just being held in limbo for the time being. So that's what we need to, to do to set up the moving object solve. And we can just let that run and very quickly we get a solution for that. And you'll see that there's a object marker down here in the corner. Uh, that's the origin of the moving object. If we look out here in the different viewports, you know, you'll see that little cluster of points moving around in 3D, as well as the overall marker that's moving around as well. So that's our, our basic underlying conventional moving object solve. Our next step is to go over to the 3D panel and we're going to switch to object mode for our moving object. So now everything looks nice and rectangular. We're in the coordinate system of the moving object and we're going to create a plane on the surface of that moving object using 
our trackers as reference. So as I did that, you can see down in the camera view, we've now got the plane sitting on the top surface of the box. But as we go later in the shot, it doesn't move as of yet. So that is that step. So we'll switch back out of that mode. Now we're ready to worry about making that box start to move. So we're going to go over and start with the geometric hierarchy tracking part of this. And to do that, we're going to select our object one. That's going to be the parent. We'll bring up our various creation modes. And I'm going to hold down Shift and just create a moving object on the surface of the plane. So this is going to be the one that the box is going to move the, the lid of the box. So one thing I could do at this point, you know, I could lasso a bunch of vertices onto that new moving object, uh, the new uh, geometric hierarchy object. And, you know, I could then, if I play with the different coordinate axes, the, those particular vertices would move around. But, in fact, I don't, I don't need to do that because we're just moving the entire surface. So I can just take the entire plane and just reparent it down to that object. Now if I do the same thing, you know, the whole thing is going to move along. So that's, that's a lot simpler and more direct. We're not, we're not requiring any deformation to the mesh at all, where it's just a simple parenting operation. So now we have our basic setup for doing the animation of this lid. But in order to do it, we're going to want to use these trackers. And really just, uh, we'll start out with one of the trackers to make that box lid move. So I'm going to take 41 here and go and parent it down on object 2. So with a, a tracker as a child, this geometric hierarchy tracker knows that it's, it's going to use the supervised tracker as a basis for what it does, rather than looking at the images by itself. So now I can go and I'm going to unlock the tilt angle and then I'm going to turn off the key because this key is only used for the uh, image based trackers. So now if I go and start playing through this with a little left. Oh, I did, uh, so actually that was doing image-based tracking. So there's one other thing that I, I needed to do, which is I, I didn't give the system any way of knowing where this tracker is supposed to be on this mesh. It's got it out there, but it needs to know, and, and the place that it needs to know is out here as, as a set of lock coordinate values. So to set that up, I just go to this place mode and I select this tracker and I'm literally going to go and put it out on this tracker, out on the uh, mesh. Let's just zoom in a little bit here. So it's, that, that's the point where we want this tracker really to wind up being. So now going to right click if we play it through the shot. The 
the lid opens up. So that is our, our first initial big trick. Now if we go and we, we scrub through this a little bit, you'll see that as it opens up, it's not the world's most accurate thing. Some because of these trackers down on the bottom especially aren't, aren't particularly visible. So there, there is some drift relative to the, the box itself for the, the top object. So some of that is because we didn't really build it all that accurately. And what we can do now is let's see if we can even add some more to be able to null out these particular errors and, and make it even more accurate as far as tracking this top part of the mesh to the box. So to do that, again, we're going to create some more geometric hierarchy objects. In this case, I'm going to put one out here where this other tracker is. So now you see we've, we've got a couple different guys in a row. And right now this guy isn't doing anything. I could set up some, some vertices to it directly. But here I'm going to use the vertex maps instead to set this up with some smooth gradients that I've already done. Now here's my gradient map. And if you look at it, you see it's a little funny. It, it has a vertical gradient in green and blue. And it has a red gradient that runs diagonally towards that top corner. And we'll see what that's for in a little bit. But initially, we're going to use that vertical gradient. So I'm going to open it up. And I'm going to tell it I want to use the green channel from that gradient map to weight all the vertices. So now when I go and do that, I can go, if I just play, you'll see that I'm in this direction, I'm adjusting up and down. And for that matter also, I can adjust back and forth as well. So the game that we're going to play is to unlock those two degrees of freedom. And this guy here is tracker three. So we're going to take him, and we're going to make him be a child of that object. And we're going to do the same thing of using the place mode to put it out there on the mesh so that uh, we know what's supposed to line up with what. Now again, we go back to this guy, and we also unkey. And that now snaps that corner of the mesh up to that location. And again, we'll go and we'll play through the shot, let it figure that all out. So, you know, it's, it's continuously morphing that one corner of, of, well, you know, skewing and scaling that mesh to keep that corner in, in place. And, you know, you can see what's, what's going on with the, the other corner. It, it does have some issues also. So, <laughs> as they say, why stop now? We'll just go and do another set up another little guy out here. Let's see. I'm going to get this guy to line up. Oh, always something. 
yeah, that is the orientation I want there. So that's lined up along that top edge there. And we're going to repeat these same steps, basically, except that we've, we've run out of trackers a little bit. We need to get that 41 again. So we're going to take 41 and we're going to clone it down into this guy to give us another copy. I'm just going to use the middle mouse to scroll the or pan the little hierarchy view down there. And I'll, I'll point out we could put the hierarchy view over here too if there's even more stuff. So we've got now this one that's 411 and we need to replace repeat doing the place mode so it's going to be pretty much the same spot up there but the coordinate system is actually going to wind up being a little diff different I think we actually locked on to the other existing tracker so let's put it there so now we've got that guy set up. Let's double check our coordinate axes here again. So that's our left and right. And up and down directions there. So we're going to unlock those two. And again, we need to do a little vertex weighting here. So we're going to bring in that same gradient this time, but this time we're going to use the red channel that has that partial gradient. And now you see it, it's set up just for this corner. So the gradient only starts here at the midline and goes up that way. So we're going to apply that. And you can see how that affects just that corner. And we're going to turn off the key there because we don't need that and now we're ready to run through the shot and you can see how it's continuously deformed the mesh to be able to line up with the box so even even though it started out not being a super accurate sort of thing and to be honest it's still not super accurate you can see but uh, you could go and, and, and tweak things using these deformations to be able to compensate for the slight unmodeled sorts of things you know our box is bending a little as we open it and stuff like that so here we're using these deformations from the geometric hierarchy system to accommodate that so that's really a very cool and very flexible capability. Hope you enjoy it and are able to put it to work. Thanks for watching.